Hey you guys, Dr. Confessor here. So, I just finished a book uh, yesterday. Um, it took me a minute to get through it because it's not a genre I usually read, but it was really interesting. Um, so, I read The Duchess by Amanda Foreman. Um, so it is a biography. It's about the fifth Duchess of Devonshire. Sorry, I'm American. I don't know any of that English stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. I watch Doctor Who after, after all. Anyways. <laughs> um, so it's about Georgiana Spencer Cavendish. Uh, she married the fifth Duke of Devonshire when she was 17. Uh, or she met him when she was 17 and then they actually got engaged when she was 18. Can't remember the details. Read the book if you really, really want to figure it out. Anyways, so this is a biography. I didn't realize that when I started reading it. So <laughs> at first I was a little confused. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, okay, who is this woman? And I started looking at the family treats. And I actually read the little foreword that the author did. Okay, so a little backstory on me. <laughs> I don't always read forewords by the authors because when I was about 12 or 13, I tried to read The Scarlet Letter. Well, I read the foreword. And in the foreword, it actually tells everything that happened in the book. Like, it wasn't ran by the author, it was ran by like, uh, someone else and they were like analyzing everything that happened sorry I'm making sure my cat's not eating something okay <laughs> and so that kind of ruined me everyone to read forwards so that's why I just went straight into the book like yeah I'll get to the family trees I'll get to all that well then I'm like okay it's not really reading like a fiction which I thought that was what it was based off of the back. So remember, I'm from America. <laughs> I have no knowledge of England other than what I see on the news and on Doctor Who <laughs> and some other BBC shows. Um, nerd over here. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't know anything about this woman, never heard of her in my life. Um, but I should have, she is a descendant of, or no, she is an ancestor of Diana, Princess of Wales. So I figured it was based off of truth. I didn't realize it was like biography. <laughs> so I got through like the first chapter, I'm like, okay, I'm really confused. Try looking at the family tree. Again, another stupid moment. <laughs> I thought the very beginning it was talking about her mom and I was waiting for the longest time for them to start talking about her and it wasn't it was actually talking about her the whole time so I had it kind of in my mind like okay I was stupid again I didn't read the foreword I should have <laughs> so I got through the second one and I'm like the second chapter and like okay what's going on Still no idea what's going on. Who are we talking about? What's going on? So I looked closer at the family tree, and then I actually read the foreword. Amanda Foreman actually dedicated her thesis on Georgiana Cavendish of Duchess of Devonshire. Yeah. <laughs> so this was actually her... Um, she had originally started research on something else for her thesis, but then she stumbled on something that Georgiana had written, and so she got really intrigued. Um, there was only ever two biographies ever written about her, and they were both written by men, so of course you know things are going to be left out. <laughs> um, so she dedicated, like, I think it, she said 10 years of her life. <laughs> researching this woman and I mean she obviously did her thesis paper but then she went above and beyond and wrote this book 
Also, side note, I know the cover has Kara Knightley on it. I haven't even watched the movie yet, and I really want to now. <laughs> um, I might actually do a compare contrast video once I do watch the movie. But anyways, back to the book review. So that was my initial thoughts on the book. Like, okay, what's going on? Who is this woman? What? Well, then I noticed. I've seen this picture before. Obviously, somewhere. Who knows where. It's a very famous piece of artwork. That's her. <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, so I have some connection. Like, I've seen this before. So then I started doing my own research online. Like, okay, who is this woman? What's going on? Try not to give away anything for the book. So I'm like, do I really want to read a biography? Never read a biography before never really appealed to me. The only mem- Okay, the only memoirs I've read are from, um, let's see, I've only read three memoirs in my life. One was from an, a kid in Japan with autism. He wrote a book with his, to like, make people aware that just because he's nonverbal doesn't mean he doesn't have his own thoughts. Then I read, a memoir about an author who I've never heard of before. That's the only book I've ever read by him. But his journey about his son with autism. And then I read Felicia Day's memoir. That's, those are memoirs though. Biographies I'm like, boring. Even though I really love history. But, I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, it didn't really read as a biography. Um, there was a couple points where I could feel the author's opinion kind of going in there, and she did say that she tried very hard not to, like, have that Stockholm Syndrome that a lot of people get when they're researching one specific person. Um, but I think she did a very good job being, like, very practical, but then writing it as a story. Like... She was telling about this woman's life that barely anyone has ever heard of, unless I'm assuming if you're from England, I'm sure you have some knowledge of who she is. But she also did mention that come Victorian England time, Victorian era England, they did go back and destroy a lot of her letters um, because there was that whole push of women should not be in politics. And she was a woman who was very involved in politics. Um, so, Georgiana, <laughs> let's get back to that. So, a lot of the stuff she did have to piece together. And a lot of the stuff was, like, puzzle. So, yeah, she did kind of have to be like, okay, this could be what was going on, but this could also be what's going on. Like, there's times she's like, yeah, this could have happened, but there's no actual proof of it because all the letters were destroyed, so we have no proof of it. There's no one to actually know except for the people of that time. Now I'm rambling again. <laughs> so, Georgiana, I actually became really fascinated by her. Like, I was like, holy crap, I can't put this book down. And yes, I know it did take me a little bit to read it, but once I actually got into it and realized, like, okay, this is a biography, but this is a good story. Like, I want to know what happens next in her life. What did she accomplish next? Like, holy crap, she accomplished a lot. Um, she, so yeah, she got, she was married to the Duke. Um, I mean, she came from a wealthy family, but as far as the aristoc aristocracy See, I can't even say that word. Aristocratic society is involved. Her family was among the more poor side. Um, so she married someone who had more wealth and more of a title um, or a higher title. Because her father was a lord, but then her husband was a duke. And I think a duke, I, based off of what I read, I think it basically implied that a duke was higher than a lord. But don't quote me on that again. I'm not sure. That's something I do have to look up. Um, 
So it comes from, it starts when she's young, kind of gives a little backstory of, like, how she was as a kid, but then it goes straight into, like, her marriage with him, like, their wedding day. Um, and on their wedding day, he, his lover was giving birth to a daughter. Awesome. Which was very common back then, apparently, because, holy crap, <laughs> was there a lot? Okay, and, the, okay, so, off of that, on this, it says there were three people in her marriage. And on the back, it talks about, like, her passionate, doomed love for Earl Grey. There wasn't even any mention of Earl Grey until later on in her life. You know who the third person in her marriage was? Her best friend. Yeah. You need to read the book to understand what I'm getting at. That was the most intriguing part. So, she was married to the Duke, and then, like, she became best friends with this other woman, and... Next thing we know, yeah, you, you need to just read the book. And I trust, like, trust me, you want to read this book. I learned a lot. Like, every couple pages, I had to look up new words. Because I'm like, okay, not only is this written by an English woman, and all these letters are written by an English woman, but all these letters are also from the... 18th century, 18th, early 19th century. So some of these words are not only a little foreign <laughs> to Americans, but I mean they're old too. So I had to look up some words. I also learned about a lot about the French Revolution um, because she was friends with Marie Antoinette. So I learned a lot about the French Revolution from an English perspective, but that's a lot more than I get as an American high school student. I mean, I'm a college student now, but we briefly only discussed the French Revolution in school. So, I actually really enjoyed this, just because I did learn a lot. Um, I learned a lot about how politics work, um, and how women just get a lot of crap. <laughs> That's basically it. Like, she did a lot. Like, she wasn't even just in politics, but she, a little bit later in her life, she got into, like, mineralogy, so a lot of the minerals and fossils that she found are actually still in museums to this day. But not all of them have her name attached to them, because 18th century woman. Um, let's see, what else? She wrote a few plays, a lot of poems, but all under different names. Um, some of those were her decisions, not all of them. Um, just because of some stuff that was going on in her life, and some of the plays that she did write. Um, what else? Oh, this is interesting. She helped invent laughing gas. Like, I didn't even know laughing gas was a thing back then. But the person she was working with on laughing gas, because she got into chemistry a little bit too, he was kind of the joke of science. Um, actually, I did want to look this up. Because I can't remember his name, and I'm not going to scroll through this book. Laughing gas. Founder of laughing gas. Um, Humphrey Davy is said to have created it, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't the name that was in here. Anyways, so the scientist she was working with on laughing gas wasn't really taken seriously at the time. So, um... Anyway, 
Anyways, if you really want to look up, go ahead and look up. Um, I'm not going to sit here and look something up for you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, isn't that crazy? Like, laughing gas was a thing back then, in like the 1780s. But again, like I said, I don't think it actually became very... Like, I don't think it was taken serious until later on um, in the science community. So it wasn't really widespreadly, widely spread. It wasn't used a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I have to watch the movie now. Um, so, uh, braiding. Um, I can't really... Like I said, I haven't really read biographies before, and I'm kind of in like the, holy crap, this book is so cool, but she was awesome. Um, the writing style was really good. I might have to actually give this one a five, just because I can't really think of anything that was wrong with it. And again, I'm not a historian, so if there was anything that's not historically accurate in here, don't ask me. Um, if there was, then I would drop it down to like a four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, who has no knowledge whatsoever of English history, other than what the Revolutionary War, and even that, oh, that happens in here too, the English side of it. And she was actually for, for America. Like, she was totally against George III. Again, I didn't know who the king was, I just knew King George. But no, it was the third King George that was in the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about that. Anyways, really need to read this book. Um, even if you're not like a history buff, um, it actually is really fascinating just because it's not just a bunch of history. It actually goes into her personal life and um, her thoughts and her debts and her family and her character. Like, it's actually really, really cool. So yeah, uh, if you've read this book, or seen the movie, or both, let me know down in the comments below. Um, I just got a ton of books, so I'm trying to decide what book to read next. Um, not going to be a biography. <laughs> I need a little break from biographies for a minute. Um, but yeah, just tell me what you think down below, subscribe. Hit the bell. I'm pretty sure there's a bell somewhere. Um, bye!